All right, good morning, everyone. We had two agenda items. Uh, the first one was on Thursday, uh, which was we were going to work on you. We started that work. We haven't quite finished it, so we will continue on it today. And then we will do some practice, OK? We'll do some practice on your presentation and some of the other things, OK? All right. So both agenda items require practice. So the possible outcomes from this session today, OK? Possible outcome from this session could be possible, OK? You'll have to play. You'll have to play hard, OK? So possible could be that you experience the size of your fears compared to you. If you're a human being, I can bet you that you, at some point in time, have experienced fear. And you continue to do so. And there is some specific circumstances where that pops up. Okay, and when it pops up, it is so much bigger than little you that you don't have a choice. Actually, I don't even know whether you exist anymore. Fear runs the show. There's no you anymore. Okay? So maybe, as we go along today, some of you probably already are. The moment I said, if your PPT is not done, the flight is already taken off, some of them are already in the experience of fear. That's OK. You just want to notice that there is fear. Okay? There's nothing to be done with it. The only time fear will probably go away is when we go away. Okay, till then, as long as you and I are human beings, fear is going to be there. And I think it's a good idea to make friends with your fear. Till now, we almost don't want it. I don't want to be afraid. Fear has come again. Oh, it is, what do you mean it's come again? It's always been there. It will always be there. And thank God for fear, because it's actually designed to protect us. But then we'll talk a little bit about where is it that you really have to deal with the fear in a way in which it protects you and another way in which it's all in the head, and it's, there's no reality to it. Okay? So for example, if a bus is coming at you know, 60 kilometers per hour, and you're crossing the road, and you look right, and you see this bus coming, and there's fear, yeah, you better run, okay? because your life then depends on it. But the moment I say, you know, OK, please get ready for the PPT and everybody's heart, which was normal you know, heart rate of 72 beats per minute, suddenly starts going like, bub, 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 you know, it's like a machine gun in, inside there. What happened? All I said is, come on, be ready to present your PPT. So that's not real. I mean, you know, there's no threat. We've been conducting this course for the last 10 years, and we've never had even the need to call an ambulance. So don't worry. But you know, I can't say don't worry, and then that will stop your worry. Human beings will always have fear. The heart will start beating at a certain rate. Your hands will start sweating. Your legs will start shaking. And all those things will happen. That's part of being human. The only problem is when you and I say, that shouldn't be. Hey, we've had it for so many years, and the promise is that it will remain for the rest of our life. You might as well make friends with it, right? OK, that's an invitation. So one of the things you probably get to see is the size of your fear compared to you. I'm not interested in your fear. If you're, it's OK. But I'm interested in you. And as long as you are huge and the fear is along with you, but not as big in size as you, then I have some say in the matter about how life is going to go. Otherwise, you know who's been running the show, what's been running the show. OK? All right, good. So that's one possible outcome. Another possible outcome could be that you laugh at yourself. And then you make mistakes. And then you laugh at yourself. And then you make mistakes. And then you laugh at yourself. And make mistakes. So that's what, you know, possible outcome. If that happens, is that OK? I think it's going to be OK with us. Oh, after making all those mistakes, you laugh. And then you laugh. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. Oh, and then you'll be ready to communicate. After making all the mistakes, after laughing at yourself, after making all the mistakes, and laughing and laughing, then maybe we're ready to communicate. OK, we've somewhere lost our sense of laughter, and gotten too serious in life. OK, till such time as you can't laugh at yourself, you know what? You're of no service to anybody. You can laugh at yourself. Maybe it's the beginning of something. Oh, and after communicating, you then laugh again, all right? Like you had something very significant to communicate anyway. All right, so maybe that will be a possible outcome. OK, another outcome that I'm totally committed to, OK, is that there be appreciation, there be respect, there be honor and acknowledgement for first yourself. And the moment this begins to happen for yourself, it will be available for others. 
it will be available for life and the entire universe. Okay? So that's another possible outcome that you could commit yourself to. I am positively committed to this and all the other two. So let's begin with finding a partner. Okay, so the center coordinators, uh, would you please go ahead and set up partners? Make sure two people sit together. And if there is an odd number of participants, make sure that there are three in a group so that that person is left, not left alone. And by now, mostly most people would have come. But if somebody is coming later, just make sure that they have a partner. So please set up a partner. So this person here in the yellow sari, in Amal Jyoti Kotayam, okay? So where, shake hands with your partner so I know that you have a partner. Say hello, partner. Okay, you're the coordinator. The person in the yellow yellow sari is a coordinator. Are you the coordinator? All right, Amal Jyoti. All right, everybody got a partner. Every, so shake hands with your partner. Yes, say hello, partner. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next. Nagpur, right? G H Rasoni. Good morning. All right, how many, how many participants at your center? Uh, 52. Okay, how many are there? 52 participants from my college. I know, but how many are there today? Uh, only four. Only four, okay. So are they going to the next airport to take a flight? No, sir, actually, in our college, we have the uh, parent meets. So number of the faculty are there busy. All right, okay. So uh, th for those of you who are here, please say hello to your partner. All right, and what about these two people? Are they partners or not? Sit together. Sit, yeah, you need to sit next to each. So my coordinator, you need to facilitate that. Make sure two people sit down together so that they can actually be working together. All right, thank you very much. Now say hello, new partner. No, old partner. That's okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I like that shake hand. Very good. All right, good. Thank you. Amrita, how are you? All right, Amrita, good morning again. Yeah, hello, sir. Good morning. Do you have partners now? Everybody's got a partner? All right, very good. How many people at your center? Uh, total, we have 18, but right now we have only four. Okay, very good. So, you know, thank you for the, for the people who are here. Thank you for being here. And if you're three of you, please make sure three of you work together, okay? So, shake hands with each other. Three of you, the three partners. Okay, excellent. All right, very good. All right. And the coordinator is welcome to participate, okay? Coordinator can also participate. So please feel free to participate. Okay, good. All right. So we're going to move on. So uh, I'm assuming now everybody's got a partner. And you've said hello to your partner. Let's move on. So we, you know, are now going to create a mission. And the question is, what does it take to create a mission? But let's just take a look at what mission is, okay? What does it mean to be on a mission? John F. Kennedy, in the early 60s, he declared that they would put man on the moon in 10 years. A lot of people said it cannot be done. So you, you know, normally if somebody says, I want to do this, um, there'll be a lot of people around you who'll say this cannot be done. And then you get discouraged and that's it. That's the end of the mission. But what Kennedy did was something remarkable. What he did is he said, all the people who say it cannot be done, if you're saying it cannot be done. That means you must have thought about it. And if you've thought about it, you must have come across some particular issue which is not being dealt with technically or otherwise. And maybe if they can tell us what that issue is, then that issue, if we worked on that issue and resolved that issue, it will actually make it possible for, have a, for putting a man on the moon. So what he did was he got a lot of, you know, everybody who said it cannot be done, he invited them. He said, come on. Come on over, let's all sit under one roof, let's start talking. So he put everybody under the roof, under one roof, and you know, to deal with what needed to be dealt with. And interestingly, all the resistance to that idea, all the resistance to that idea got oriented to fulfill on the mission. And you know, in less than 10 years after he said, man actually walked on the moon. Okay, so that's what a mission is. That's the kind of nature, that's the kind of um, fabric of what a mission is. You got to say it into the future. You got to be declaring it in a way in which it opens up a future, which was not going to happen before. And 
he just did something simple. Everybody who said it cannot be done, <laughs> he just got them together and said, okay, let's see if you're committedly thinking about it. Let's see how, what we need to do so that we can resolve the issue that you may have thought of. Okay? So suddenly, all the people who are supposed to be resisting you have become your partners. So a lot of times when people don't like something or they say something about you, then you don't like it. We usually say, not my friend. This is not person who's, who's going to vote for me. We never listen, listen to that person as, hey, this is a person who's pointing to something that if I got that resolved, that actually it will grow, that it will go to the next level. We don't relate with it that way. Okay? If you look at anybody who's on a mission, if you just observe people around and people in history, people around you, people who are successful, people who are on a mission, they are always talking. They are always asking. They are always looking for criticism. Okay, most of us human beings are only uh, adept at and maybe we are always looking for appreciation and acknowledgement, but we don't see criticism as a form of appreciation of our own mission. Okay, so I'm inviting you to take a look, take a look to see if you know that's something that you may want to include. So the question is, are we on a mission? I am, Professor Fatak is, everybody on the team here is, the question is, are you on a mission? And you know, what the mission we are on may may not be your mission. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in you being on our mission. I invite you. I'd welcome you. It's just that this exercise is not going to depend on that. This exercise is really focusing on the distinction mission, creation of a future. So if you're not on a mission, and this is not something that interests you, if not this, then what? You'll have to look at it. You'll have to answer that question. I cannot answer it for you. And sometimes it may be, okay, I'd like to do this, but not now. Okay, not now, then when? And then there's a third aspect, which is again very human. It's like, not me. I'd lie. It's a good idea. It should be done, but not me. Okay, in that case, you should probably answer the question, if not me, then who? So those are the three questions I'll leave you with uh, as a starting point for a mission. I think we need to address that issue each one for ourselves. So you should also take a look at, you know, there, is, there are things uh, that will be in the way of you creating a mission. You know, when you were a child, when I was a child, there's so many things I wanted to do. The whole world was available. Today I'll be a pilot, tomorrow I'll be a Pani Puri wala, third day I'll be a driver, fourth day I'll be a TV you know, a producer, uh, you know, fifth day I'll be Shah Rukh Khan. It doesn't matter, I mean, on a daily basis I could keep creating missions. And of course, you, you know, adults would say, ha, bachai, you know, little boy, little girl, okay, ha, ha. Once they grow up, they'll find out. Oh. And we grew up. Suddenly, the whole freedom of creating a mission is become, that's not real. Don't be idealistic. Are, what are you talking about? Look at politics. Look at the condition of the world. Look at the newspapers. You know, newspapers? Somewhere in the middle on the editorial page, they have a small section which says good news. Otherwise, what's the rest of the newspaper? Not good news. So you, <laughs> so you keep looking at the newspaper and you think missions are possible? No, not this lifetime anyway. Actually, you know what? I was wrong. I was born in the wrong time of history. I should have been born, you know, 100 years from now. Then maybe I would have been able to. But right now, the circumstances, mission, are you nuts? You crazy? Nothing's possible. Too bad. This is it. This is our time. This is when we are on the planet. So, let's take a look, okay? Let's take a look at what's in the way. What's in the way of us creating a mission? Three things, okay? Three things that are in the way of you and I creating our missions. Number one, fear. Number two, fear. Number three, fear. We've never really looked at fear other than one not wanting it, okay? There are many, many kinds of fears, but mainly two. As an animal, human beings are animals, okay? So, animals do not think of preparing a PPT and presenting it. So, they don't have to worry about something which is in our mind, okay? So, human beings have an interesting phenomena called the mind, and we make up fear in some ways. I'm not saying it's not real. Your experience is very real. Your mouth starts going dry, your hands start sweating, your heart starts beating, but it's all a result of the mind. Nothing actually happened to cause that fear. 
However, if you know you're in a forested area and you saw a tiger who's running after you, yeah, you better run because your life is under threat. So that is real. But most of the time, as human beings nowadays, you know, I don't know. I'm sure there are people in, in Chennai uh, with the floods. That, that fear is real. It's actually happening. Life is getting threatened over there. But mostly, you know, otherwise, by and large, most of the fear that we experience is pretty much a product of the mind. So you may want to just recognize that, that that's what's running the show. All right. Some of these are all illusions, OK? So fear may be a result of an illusion. Human beings are living in the illusions. For example, you and I live in an illusion called tomorrow. Do you know that tomorrow is an illusion? How many of you know that you will wake up tomorrow morning? Center coordinators, if anybody is raising the hand, make sure they put their hands down. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, nobody knows if they're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, tomorrow, where is tomorrow? There's no tomorrow, it's an illusion. So when I say, if not now, then when, you'll say tomorrow, huh? There is no tomorrow. Sorry, bad news. But there's good news, you have today. So welcome to today. Let's live. There's another illusion. And I think you've seen the video on this one. Human beings are addicted to another illusion, and it's called certainty. By the way, that there is tomorrow also lives inside of certainty, the illusion called certainty. We are certain that there is tomorrow. And we've never actually thought about it. We've, we've, you know, to even think, to even bring any level of inquiry into tomorrow, whether tomorrow is there or not, is completely out of the picture because you and I are given by, immersed in, fully occupied with the illusion called certainty. And I think you've seen the video on this one. And there's a particular word in that quotation. So I just want to go over that word so that sometimes what happens is when you're reading something which is very powerful, and suddenly a word comes in there uh, which you don't understand, uh, then you get caught up with the not knowing the meaning of that word. Mind does tricks, OK? So you go into that reading, but then somewhere you will not fully allow yourself to be immersed in that thinking or in that thought process because there's a particular word, and you don't know what that word is. So I'm upfront telling you what this means. This is a part of the video. I'm sure you've seen it. So certitude means certainty, confidence, freedom from doubt. Synonyms are conviction, assurance, belief. You know, human beings are always trying to be free of doubt. We never bring doubt to anything. By the way, doubt is a healthy thing, especially in you know, science and engineering. You actually bring doubt so that an inquiry can open up. I'm not saying when you're designing a bridge, do it doubtfully. But when you're doing research, for sure, you want to bring doubt. You want to actually allow for certain ways of looking which may not have been possible before. My son was telling me last night, he said, you know, uh, these, the games that you have, and you hold that little console, uh, I think the next generation is going to be about touch. So I said, isn't it already about touch? It, does, it vibrates anytime you go over a rocky terrain in that uh, digital car. You know, it bzz, bzz, you actually can hear, you feel it in your hands. So he just laughed out. He says, Papa, that's just dug-dug. So I said, what do you mean by touch? He says, you'll actually, if you fall, and you fall on your shoulder, that you'll actually hurt. That's the next level of virtual reality that you know, he's thinking. And he's not too happy about it because you know, it'll actually hurt. So then we went on to a discussion about how possibly we could be already seeing, we already hearing, vibration, the tactile's already there. Maybe we can begin to smell and taste also. So if you see raspberry or strawberry, pick up your favorite fruit. I hope everybody's had breakfast because otherwise if I mention food, you start feeling hungry. But if you think of a strawberry, you know, you actually, mm, the taste of strawberry actually shows up. That would be interesting as virtual reality. But that can only begin when you say, hey, is this, you know, is this something possible here? Some of you might, some of you know, most people will say, that's not possible. Yeah, but man on moon was not possible, right, till a few decades ago. Okay, so certainty is something which is good, but at the same time you should know that it prevents from things which haven't happened from happening. Okay, so it actually is antithesis of creation. This one you know, the dilemma as human beings, we experience this dilemma day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out. All right, I'm just going to go over it line by line. As the lines come up, uh, can you please read it aloud? So please read it aloud, everybody. Everybody read it aloud. All right, so coordinators, please help me with this. 
just make sure that everybody is reading these lines aloud as I will keep bringing two lines at a time. So, you read the two lines and then the next two lines and the next two lines. Okay? So, would you please do this as we are doing this exercise. So, everybody now please be ready. I will bring up the two lines and everybody read it aloud and then I will stop and then you next two lines you read it aloud. Okay? Let us do that. All right? So, please enjoy the process and let it touch you. Let this quotation touch you. Let it impact you. You have to allow that because otherwise by and large we are so you know, sheltered, we are so shielded, we are so armored that we do not want anything to touch us or impact us because it will disturb our life. I would like for you, I would like for this to disturb your life and I do not mean it in a bad way, but I want to, you know, I wanted to shake you up a little bit. There is too much certainty. We want something else to become possible, a new design of you, a new you to be possible, something has got to get shaken up, alright. So, be ready everybody, okay. Please allow yourself, give yourself permission to be touched by this. Okay, so, here are the first two lines. Everybody please read it loudly. Everybody here also, please read it loudly, so I know it is happening. So, you and I are chained by our certitude and therefore, we are slaves to our certitude. Lovely, is not it? I just love this quotation. Only a person who takes risks is free. So, you really want to figure out how free you are. Somebody from yesterday uh, had, on a day before yesterday had given feedback when you had looked at that is how life is in a flat earth and you said something very beautiful. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, is freedom available to us? It is. Are you willing to risk it? It goes hand in hand. There is two sides of a hand, you know, back in the front. You want freedom? It goes with risk. Two sides of the same coin maybe. Okay, so I invite you to that. Okay, I think it got a little eaten up on the side, but here is another quotation. Okay, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something is more important than fear. The brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. I, what I like about it is the, 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 but rather the judgment that something is more important than fear. Okay, so the you, the mission called you and fear. The moment the judgment comes in that that mission is more important than fear, I think things will, things will begin to happen. Okay? That is my promise to you. Okay, so, uh, maybe probably a good time to do some notebook work. Okay? Please take out your notebooks and I will give you 5 minutes to begin to articulate a future. Okay? And it will start with my mission is. This is in your notebook. It is exclusively for you. You do not have to share it with anybody. This is personal. This is private. At the most, I will request you to share it with your partner. Please be generous and share it with your partner. Open your hearts and begin to write. I will give you 5 minutes. It can be 3, 4 bullet points. It can be some ideas. It is something that you have always been inspired by. It could be something which you have dreamt of. Okay? So, please take 5 minutes and start the work. I will wait for 5 minutes. I will come back to you after 4 minutes to tell you one more minute is left and then we will complete the exercise and I will get a chance to hear from you as to what you are creating. Okay? And I'm just, I just want you to know that this is a sacred process. It is a very sacred process and I welcome you to it. I invite you to it and I am honored that I get to actually share the sacred space with you. Okay, so, please start the work. I will come back to you in 4 minutes. Thank you. All right, so, what I would like for you to do now is please uh, turn to your partner and uh, say, hello partner. You want to share <clears throat> what is it, what are your thoughts on a mission that you would like to lead, a mission that you would like to be a part of. Okay? And uh, just some thoughts, it does not have to be fully articulated, but you want to use the time with your partner. Uh, to get your thoughts flushed out and then maybe listen to them and be inspired by each other. Okay, that is the opportunity. And uh, so, I hope everybody is ready to go. So, person with shorter hair today. Okay? So, person with shorter hair uh, goes first. So, I will give you 2 minutes each. After 2 minutes, I will tell you to switch so that both, both the partners get a chance to speak. Okay? So, please start now. 2 minutes each. Okay, very good. So, I am going to open it up for some interactions now.
Okay, so this is Surat, Sarvajanik College of Engineering. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Excellent, excellent. All right, very good. I love the way you wave your hands. Thank you. So please, I'd like for, you know, so what happened? I'd like for you to share what's happening uh, with, you know, anybody would like to share from your group as to what's happening when you are beginning to look at this whole idea of creating a mission for, your, mission for yourself. A lot has been happening. In fact, everybody is uh, rediscovering a new you. I'll hand over the mic to one of my colleagues, and it would be, I'm the coordinator here, sir. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so this is, you know, it's uh, sometimes you ask for volunteers, and sometimes you give the microphone to somebody and say, hey, you are the volunteer. Okay, so this is one of those situations. <laughs> Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Morning. My mission is to lead my nation where the mind is without fear mm. and would like to live in a developed nation. Excellent. Beautiful. Beautifully said. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. All right. Give, me, give it to another person. Mm. So my mission is to make all childhood study stress-free and all child should love the studies. Excellent. Excellent. Well done. Well done. Okay. Very well done. All right. One more person. Hello. Yeah, yes, sir. My mission is that I want to groom my kids as responsible citizen. Okay. One more time. Say it one more time. Mm -hmm. I feel that as mothers, we take the responsibilities our kids. But if we make them responsible, then obviously they can take further their aims, their objectives, and the country to the heights. Excellent. And you love being a mother. Yeah, sure. <laughs> For sure, sir. <laughs> All right, excellent, excellent. All right, next center, CU Shah College of Engineering, Surendra Nagar. Hi, good morning. All right, so please, I'd like two of you to share what's opening up, what's happening. Sir, I'm Vida Darji from CU Shah, and my mission is to be a successful woman as a professional, as a daughter, as a wife, and most likely to be a mother of having a great quality. I wish to contribute to the society surrounding me. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much for creating that. Thank you. Okay, one more person. Sir, my mission is make India strong in agriculture field. I, I didn't hear it. Say it three more times. Uh, my mission is make India strong in special agriculture field. Okay, now can you please put the paper down? My mission is make India strong in agriculture field. Excellent. So now one last time, one more time, but you want to say it knowing that three million people are hearing you. Make India strong in special agriculture field. Beautiful. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, thank you. Next person, please. Morning, sir. Good morning. So my mission is, I'll put it like this way. Uh, it is like... Uh, I want to spread my celebrate life. That's it. No flowery words. Okay, so say it slowly. Say it again. 3,500 people are listening. My mission is to spread my celebrate life. All right, and when will that mission begin? This moment. Okay, and does it start with you? Absolutely, sir. Fabulous. So say it one more time so I can actually get that around you there's nothing but celebration happening. To spread smiles, celebrate life. Excellent. So people around you, can you big, give a big clap to her? Okay, excellent. Excellent. Thank you. There was one person in front who I missed, who had stood up. Yes. My mission is to bring to transformation in society, to bring awareness and bring confidence in people for what they had and have. All right, excellent. Uh, I can hear you, but can you hear yourself? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I repeat, my mission is to bring transformation in society, to bring awareness in society, and to make people confident about what they had and what they have. All right, and the mission is going to begin when? Already started. Excellent. So. Around you, people will experience transformation, yes? Yes. Fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. 
All right, this is Pawai Engineering College. All right, hello, good morning. My mission is to contribute something very useful to the society with my knowledge. Excellent. So I think first thing, first thing you have to do is stand up. Excellent. All right, excellent. Now tell me what you have to say. Sir, my mission is uh, to contribute something very useful to the society with my knowledge. Excellent. I have gained a lot from this workshop to achieve my mission. Okay. All right, good. So uh, look around you. Look at the people around you. The other half of population also. Okay, good. Very good. All right. So say it in a way in which you can hear it yourself. This is for you now. We heard it. I'd like for you to hear what you're saying. I want to contribute something very useful to the society, sir. That Excellent. Is, uh, I am very interested uh, in the field of solar uh, power plants. So in this uh, power crisis uh, situation, I want to uh, this, uh, install a uh, power plant, a solar power plant for our society, especially for uh, my institution. Put the microphone next to your mouth, closer, okay. You said something about solar, say it again. Yes, sir. Solar panel, that is the solar power plant. Okay. Can I be a part of your mission? Yes, sir. All somehow the power crisis that uh, exists uh, in the present situation. Okay, I have a question. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, can I be on your mission? Yes or no? Sir, you're welcome, sir. Send me an email to invite me. Yes, yeah, sir. Good. Immediately today afternoon, I'll send a mail to you. Right. Thanks, and then, thanks a lot. Very good. And then you should take that same email and send it to 100 other people. Good morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Uh, my mission is this. I want to motivate the depressed people uh, to face their challenges. I'm a trainer already. So I want to do a lot of things to the people, that means especially depressed people, students and uh, those who are working. I just make them to how to use their time effectively, uh, to invent their inherent talents and how can we use it. Wow. We should not say that I cannot come up in my life. It's possible if we try. We don't use it properly. So I want to make it very strong that all the human beings got our own responsibility in this earth and God has given a lot of things. Just find it, discover it, and execute. That's what we have to do. That's my mission, sir. Excellent, excellent. So, can I be on your mission? Yes, sir. Very complete. Send me an email. Yes, definitely, sir. I'm very happy. <laughs> excellent. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, thank you for declaring yourself. Thank you for opening up that world. I'm sure there are questions as to how to do it. But I don't have to be worried about it because if that is your baby, then you will take care of your baby. I don't have a concern about it. The question is, are you giving birth to a baby or not? So uh, as long as you have a baby and you are the parent of that baby, I don't have an issue. Okay? You will do whatever is required to make sure that you nurture the baby. Now sometimes you might forget that that's your baby. But don't worry. We'll do things to make, you make sure that you, know, you remember that. All right? All right. So... Now, some of you who shared have been able to articulate it in a way in which there's clarity. Okay? Some of you might still be struggling with it. Some of you might even think mission and all is okay. I mean, we really need to live our lives right now. As long as I can live my life, forget about mission. My mission in life right now. By the way, human beings have one mission by default like all animals, one mission by default, which is survival. Most human beings are unknowingly totally committed to survival. Now that you have to do anyway, okay, there's no doubt about that, you, you, you know, you cannot not do that. But at the same time, is there something else that's available? Is there a game to play? So you, of course, you got to take care of a survival and then the next step as to how is it that I can contribute, how is it that I can participate, how is it that I can create, which is a faculty which is available to human beings. That's our gift. So some of you are still in the process of articulating. I invite you to keep doing that. I put a caution sign over here to make sure that you don't have to worry. It may take a week, it may take two weeks, 
but keep working on it. Okay, this is not something which will happen overnight or can happen in an instant. Some of you have written up or articulated something which is your mission. By the time you have dinner tonight, you might think, that's not what, I, I, I don't want to do that, I want to do something else. You want to grow to uh, the next level. And so you take that up. But at some point in time, when you're inspired by who you are, when you're inspired by what you're up to, you will know that the articulation is complete. Okay? All right. Just a few hints about how to stay on the mission. So first thing is that you have to be willing to create a mission and be on a mission. Nobody can force you to do that. Somebody has to get onto the bicycle to ride the bicycle. You cannot push somebody on a bicycle and say, now ride the bicycle. Okay? You have to get onto the bicycle yourself. If you're a human being, and I think I checked with the registration team, they said everybody was human, 3,400 plus people, all human. So as long as you're a human being, I can assure you, I can guarantee you, I can go to the bank with this, that every time that the going gets tough, that you and I as a human beings don't want to be on the mission. We want to get off the mission. It seems like a bad idea. Right now you may be very inspired by it, but you know, when the going gets tough, you'll say, forget the mission, I got other things to do. This is too painful, and this is not what I settled for. This is not what I committed to. It, it was supposed to be inspiring all the time. This is not inspiring anymore, too, you know, so forget it. In that situation, the willingness would come in another form. It'll come in the form of you choosing it again, never mind that it may not be inspiring at that time. You know, the only thing that is guaranteed on a mission is hard work. Only thing, the only, only, only thing that is guaranteed on a mission is hard work. And I say to my students quite often that while hard work is guaranteed, suffering is optional. You don't have to suffer. You can keep working hard and stay inspired. Okay? All right. So, the desire to get off the mission will come. And you've got to recognize it and recognize it as what? Hey, I, suddenly, hey this, is, this, is, this is familiar. I have this desire right now to get off the mission. And you can laugh about it. It's, like, it's come. I'm a human being. It has come. It's come again. And every time you have a choice to say, OK, I got the desire. Thank you very much. Back on the mission. So your willingness is going to be in place. And then what's next, which requires for you to stay on the mission, is articulation and sharing and being in action. Okay, Articulation and sharing and being in action. So you know, I asked one person to say it in a way that they can hear it. Then I asked another person to leave the paper now. You don't need the paper. You created it. Okay, You make, make a few mistakes in saying it, but it requires practice. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody has learned how to ride a bicycle by holding a paper in hand. Okay? You got onto the bicycle, you fell down. You get onto the bicycle, you fell down. Get on the bicycle, you fell down. Fall 30,000 times, I don't care. But the only access for your mission is getting onto the bicycle. So you have to articulate it, you have to share it, and you have to be in action. I'll just share this one slide. What is your access to power? Okay? And when I say power, it means, what is power? <laughs> Interesting. We'll talk about it after the tea break, okay? But right now, let's just take it, you know, whatever the interpretation of power you have. A lot of times people associate politicians as powerful people, okay? No, no, no. My son is very powerful. He's not a politician. He's very powerful because he has access to something which makes him powerful. You and I have access to power, and we just need to be able to get that, okay? So what is your access to power? I'll just hint at it, and then we can talk about it a little more. Three things. You remember? Previously, what was in the way were three things, fear, fear, and fear, okay? So your access to power is three things, sharing, sharing, and sharing. You got to be a mad person about sharing your mission. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Right now, when you go on a tea break, what are you going to do? Share. You look at a person and say, I don't want to share with this person. I got it. I got it. And then share. Never mind what that thought is. 
I don't like this person. I don't care. Share. Because desire to get on the mission comes in many forms. I like it. I don't like it. This is comfortable. This is not comfortable. I, I don't care. If you want power in your mission, you have to share. So what are you going to do with the tea break? Share. See what happens. By the way, this is for anything, okay? Sharing, sharing, sharing. You share, all of your humanity is available, all the power is available. Some of us become very private people. Some of us become only loving only our family members only. Love is only available for others I can like. Loving, it's very risky business. You cannot risk loving everybody. Are you on a mission to love? Okay, take it on. Go love everybody. Some of you like the idea. Yeah, it's a beautiful idea. It's an idea whose time has come. So, I just want to give you another hint. You know, presence of fear could actually be an indicator for an opportunity to share. So every time you feel this fear, you experience fear, ah, oh, it means I have to share now. What a lovely idea. Sarji, I'm not advertising, okay? Okay. All right. And the last slide before we take a break. So more the fear, more you share. Okay. So please go ahead, have a lovely cup of tea or coffee, whatever you're going to have, and come back in about five minutes so we can start again. There's a lot of work to be done. And uh, so please go ahead and share your mission. So your work during the break is to share, share, share your mission. Share, get inspired, be inspiring, go. Fall a few times, that's okay, but go share, okay? Bye-bye, see you in five minutes.